What I want to do this afternoon is to reflect very generally on what I believe to be a basic paradox in many religious attitudes to power. And this will take us to some quite fundamental reflections on the kind of God to whom power is ascribed, especially in the Abrahamic religions, the kind of use and abuse that is made of power in religious institutions and religious rhetoric, and I hope may open up some channels for thinking again about what non-violent human relations might actually look like. Religion becomes involved in projects of control, seeking to safeguard God's will or purpose, and to restrain or suppress anything that might count as rebellion against God. And so, religion comes to be perceived, unsurprisingly, as an essentially repressive force in culture. What can we do for Syria? I wish I knew. I could talk about that for a long time. But the one thing that I think is risky to do, and the one thing which I think, to their great credit, um, the British Parliament drew back from last year, the one thing that's dangerous to do is to do something so that you feel you're doing something and to think, well, because I'm doing something, it ought to be getting better. And you then get very angry because it's not getting better. There is no theology that removes the sting of suffering. There is no theology that takes away pain. And when people in pain or angry about the pain of others ask for theological responses, I'm not at all sure they'd be any happier if I made a a completely conclusive and watertight theological case to them. A great deal of what we now see as anxious and controlling conservative faith is in many ways very deeply non-traditional. What I might say is, look, this is not about conservative versus liberal or radical versus moderate. This is actually about whether, let's put it very bluntly, faith is about you or about God. The issue of blasphemy is neuralgic and painful for people because especially in situations that are felt to be unstable, then a word spoken against my God is a word spoken against me, and if I feel vulnerable and all the rest of it, that's how I will receive it. I argued a few years ago when the, uh, the discussion about the cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in Denmark was much discussed, that it was actually not very helpful just to cast this in terms of benighted Muslims making themselves difficult. We also had to say, well, why is there such apprehension and fear in that community? And I just wish we could recast some of our discussion, not in terms of freedom of speech, but in terms of civil respect and mutuality.